the next region, this is going to be the small intestines. And the small intestines, the thing to notice here are these finger-like projections or villi. So the small intestine is the only region that can have these villi. These are these small finger-like projections. And so if you imagine, they still have these little pits. They still have these little crypts as the epithelial layer extends down. But in addition to that, they have these finger-like extensions. These are the villi that extend up into the lumen of the small intestine. And so here we can see the various regions. All of this right here is going to be really the epithelial layer then some of the lamina propria. And then we're also gonna see this very kind of tight line here. This is gonna be that muscularis mucosi. Then we have the submucosa layer. And then a very thick, very prominent tunica muscularis, first with the circular muscle, followed by the longitudinal muscle. And then we would have to get very close to see that serous membrane here. So we have, should have a very thin, simple squamous layer, as well as then the, that loose areolar. So we still have all four layers here, but the villi become a very prominent feature here. Now in the small intestines, there are going to be three different regions that you need to be able to identify based on the histology. And, and those are the duodenum or the duodenum, the jejunum, and then the ileum. Here is a very nice close-up view of the epithelial layer. And the thing to note here is we have that simple columnar. But in addition to that, we have goblet cells. And so you'll also, for the first time, notice very distinct, those kind of urn shape or goblet-shaped cells. Those are those mucus-producing cells um, that we've learned about in the past. But here we can see them as part of the simple columnar ET within the small intestine. You'll also notice that there's going to be the brush border, right? And so these are the ones that have the microvilli. We can't see them individually, but we can see collectively as this kind of fuzzy little border here called the brush border. And so the small intestine is going to have the simple columnar with goblet cells, as well as the microvilli that's represented here by this very kind of thin, hazy brush border. The one thing to use to identify the duodenum is going to be these glands down here in the submucosa. And so in the duodenum, and only in the duodenum, you have these Brunner glands. And these Brunner's glands are going to be very important glands that are secreting in this nice alkaline-rich substance to help neutralize the acid, right? The, the duodenum is receiving the contents from the stomach. And so this nice acid-rich material from the stomach has to be neutralized. And so the duodenum is going to have these prominent glands, these Brunner's glands within the submucosa. So again, we see the villi. We can see the very prominent lamina propria. We can see then this very kind of distinct line, this barrier. This is going to be that muscularis mucosa. And then you see the submucosa, kind of a more airy kind of CT layer with blood vessels. But most important here are going to be these Brunner's glands. This is going to be the defining feature of the duodenum. The next layer, which is the jejunum, really doesn't have any defining feature. And so you'll see that the ileum, the next one, has another very important feature to identify. And so this is the jejunum. And we can see the very nice, prominent finger-like projections. These are the villi. We can see then down all the way to the bottom of the mucosa, where the muscularis mucosi would be. We can then see the submucosa here. We don't see any glands, so the Brunner's glands are not here. That tells us this is not the duodenum. And then we can start to see the smooth muscle layers making up the tunica muscularis. And again, the first layer here is the circular layer. The next one, on the other hand, this is the ileum. And the ileum is going to be identified based on these very, very large patches. These are called Peyer's patches. These are actually lymphatic nodules. If you remember from the lymphatic system, we have these clusters of of, of lymph tissue, a lot of, of B and T cells all bundled together. And these tend to accumulate in areas where the body's exposed to the outside environment. A lot of our mucous membranes have a pretty significant um, a lymphatic layer associated with them. And so the ileum is gonna have these lymphatic nodules all clustered together referred to as Peyer's patches. They're very easy to see, they stand out. You'll see here that they're in the, in the submucosa, right? So here's our villi all the way down to the bottom of the mucosa. 
Then we get into the submucosa, and in this area, we have this very, very, very prominent feature, these pyres patches. And then down below that, we start to see the smooth muscle layer again. This next slide, same thing. These pyres patches, these lymphatic nodules are really apparent. And so if you see them, you know you're in the ileum. If you don't see them, but you see glands in the submucosa, then you know you're in the duodenum. And if you look and you see neither the glands or these pyres patches, then you are by default then in the jejunum. And so remember, if you see villi, if you see these finger-like projections, you know you're in the small intestine. And then the next step is to look for then these two defining features, either the pyres patches, as we see here, or the Brunner's glands, which we will see in the duodenum. In addition to the layers that we've been talking about and some of the glands that we've been talking about, there are also these two special forms of nervous tissue that we are looking at now in this particular part of lab. And so remember from the autonomic nervous system that there are ganglia that exist within the organ itself. And that was particularly true when we talked about the parasympathetic nervous system, that they would often synapse directly in the wall of the organ. And so here we can see this is between the circular muscle layer and the longitudinal muscle layer. This then very distinct kind of irregular patch of cells, this is going to be referred to as the, the myenteric plexus. And this myenteric plexus, this is an area between the two layers of muscle. And so it tends to stand out and be easy to see because the, the, really the direction that these muscle fibers are going and then this very kind of irregular patch of cells here. What we're gonna find here, we're gonna find um, synapses of the parasympathetic nervous system. We're also gonna be finding some postganglionic uh, axons from the sympathetic nervous system. So this is where that autonomic nervous system is actually innervating penetrating into the, the wall of, of the effector organ. So again, the ones between the two layers of muscle, this is referred to as the myenteric plexus. Whereas you'll notice in this view, we're up in the submucosa. And so here is the nice example of that circular smooth muscle, right? We start to see the very parallel running fibers. And so above that, we have kind of the more irregular fibers. Again, we'd find a lot of collagen in here. Um, this is the lamp, this is, sorry, this is the submucosa. And you'll notice in this view that there is this patch of cells that really stands out. It's different from all the other ones. It's not blood vessels like we see here. It's not, again, your classic irregular connected tissue like we see here. These have very, very, very large nuclei with very prominent nucleoli. These are neuron cell bodies. And so this, this should look a lot like what we were just looking at in the previous unit with the nervous system. And these are the cell bodies of neurons. This is the other plexus we have for you. This is referred to as the submucosal plexus. And so the plexus, again, this area of cell bodies, um, this is where we find this uh, parasympathetic synapses going on. We can see some postganglionic um, uh, neurons of the sympathetic nervous system here. But the one, this plexus in the submucosa is referred to as a submucosal plexus. This kind of controls a lot of the secretions of glands, whereas the one that's going to be in this previous slide directly between the two layers of muscle, this is going to be the myenteric plexus. And these are the ones that actually control those involuntary contractions of these smooth muscle layers. And so we have two specialized nervous tissue structures in addition to the various layers that we were looking at prior. There are then some cells that are unique to the small intestines that you should be able to identify. And so this is a close up and there's a special slide that's labeled panth cells. And these cells, the, these are cells that you're gonna find up in the tunica mucosa. These panth cells, these are these red staining cells down here at the base of these little intestinal crypts. So again, these are those pits that extend down between the villi into the lamina propria. And these panath cells, these are going to be producing this antimicrobial compounds, right? They're going to be like lysosomes. And so these stain red in the slides that we have, they tend to be easy to see. They're at the very base of these crypts and they're going to be red and, and those are going to be associated with the small intestines and they're going to be producing this kind of antimicrobial compound. So these are panath cells. The last region we have is then the large intestines. And the large intestine, the thing to note here, there are a lot of goblet cells. Even at this magnification, we can see a lot of goblet cells 
component of the epithelial lining. You'll also notice that there are no villi. Again, the villi are unique to the small intestines. What we're seeing here, imagine this is the surface. We can see these very prominent crypts or pits, kind of like we saw in the stomach, but we don't see any then finger-like projections extending up above. And so the villi here, or in the previous slides, those would be up in this area. So again, if this was the small intestines, then we would see villi extending up away from the surface into the lumen. We don't see that here. We see these pits that extend down into the mucosa, but we don't see any villi. And so that alone should tell you you're in the large intestine and not the small intestine. So the prominent goblet cells, the lack of villi, those are features to use to identify the large intestine. Other than that, we see a lot of the same features, right? We see the muscularis mucosi moving down into the submucosa, and then we get down into the muscular layers. And again, we should see the first one is the circular layer, and then we will see the longitudinal layer. Now, something unique about the large intestine, which we can see here, is that in certain areas, the longitudinal muscle layer have these very thick bulges. And so what we'll notice here, again, if we go from the lumen, we go down through the mucosa, submucosa. Now we get to that muscularis, first the circular layer. And in this area, we can see that the longitudinal layer is very, very significantly bulged out. And this would be a true on, on maybe only three or four regions of this. And this has a special name. This is referred to as the tenia coli. You can actually see these long bundles of longitudinal muscles on the gross anatomy. And so these features are, are so large and prominent that you can see them running parallel. They're running along the length of the large intestine, about three kind of almost imagine elastic bands kind of helping kind of bunch up this large intestine. And so here, histology, we can see them as these kind of swollen or extended regions of the longitudinal layer, um, whereas normally the longitudinal layer is pretty thin. You can see from here, this is where the longitudinal layer was. Now in lab, you'll want to go up to higher magnification so you can really convince yourself that, that what we see here are longitudinal smooth muscle cut in cross section as opposed to the circular smooth muscle that wraps then around the intestines. So before we move on to that next slide, I just want to kind of emphasize how to approach this histology. The first thing is look at the ET. If you see stratified squamous, you know you're in the esophagus, just you're done, right? It's only when you see the simple columnar that you start to ask yourself more questions. And so if we do see a nice simple columnar, which most of these slides have, then the next question to ask yourself is, do you see villi? And if you don't, well then you know you're either here in the large intestine or you're in the stomach. And so then the decide between the two there is the stomach had those gastric pits and those gastric glands. And so hopefully when you look between the difference here, the large intestine and then the stomach, you'll notice that both lack the villi, but the stomach will have those very kind of prominent gastric pits and gastric, gastric glands. The large intestine does not. And so if you see simple columnar without villi, without any gastric glands, and often then this very large ten e. coli, the, the, the specialized longitudinal layer of muscle, then that's going to confirm that you're in the large intestines. If you do see gastric glands, then look for those parietal and chief cells. And if you see the parietal and chief cells, then you know that you are in the, um, the, the sorry, the fundic region. And so again, if you, if you do look and see the gastric glands, and you see the parietal and, and chief cells within the gastric glands, then that means you're in the fundic region. Whereas if you don't see those two specialized cells, then that means you're in, a, you're in the pyloric region. And lastly, if you do see villi, well then that tells you you're in a small intestine, and then you're really asking for, do I see the Brunner's glands, which are for the duodenum, or do I see the Peyer's patches, which is for the ileum? And if you don't see either of those, then you know then you're in the jejunum. And so use those characteristics to help eliminate. And then once you know which, which region you're in, then you can start to remember some of those features, such as nervous tissue or the types of glands that are associated with each one.